our next speaker uh, is Dr. Teresita Amore. Uh, she will be giving an update on the Anthurium and Orchid Breeding Program. So Dr. Teresita Amore is an assistant researcher in the Department of Tropical Plant and Soil Sciences at the University of Hawaii's College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources, where she has worked in various capacities in the Anthurium and Dendrobium Orchid Breeding Program since 1985. She received her Bachelor of Science degree in Agriculture from the University of the Philippines at Los Banos and her MS and PhD in Horticulture from the University of Hawaii at Manoa under Dr. Haruyuki Kamimoto. Dr. Amori, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Glenn, for that introduction. Um, You're welcome. I wish to thank the Hawaii Floriculture and Nursery Association for the inf um, invitation to present at today's seminar. Hafna has been a great supporter and partner of our breeding program. Furthermore, despite the shutdowns, Hefna has put out webinars and conferences almost every two weeks since mid-September, starting with the Plantlet Par Partnership Program, also known as P3, and the Wedding Celebration Series, which I will be referring to later in my presentation. Um, and lastly, we have the educational seminar today. So it's been a, um, amazing how education has been central to these webinars for over a month. Um, with that, I'd like to share my screen and share with you my presentation. With the pandemic shutting down most of the in-person activities, we kept going on with our activities in our breeding program, we continued pollination, we were able to select some seedlings, we were able to also take the time to focus summarizing our cultivar, cultivar releases so we can do an official write up. So in late March, we just as the start, shutdown started, we sent out the cut flower evaluation forms to our cooperators. And we received feedback regarding plant performances, which I will now share with you. In addition, we also distributed micro plants of these recent releases to Hefna in um, early part of this year. The first variety that we will um, talk about and summarize is um, UH2010 Kipuka. Uh, it's relatively high yielding, but more importantly, we were able to get uh, pest and disease susceptibility information, as well as field performance um, information. Kipuka is, has its drawbacks. It's uh, quite susceptible to anthracnose, particularly when the weather is um, uh, we have high humidity and high temperatures. It does get bacterial blight, nematodes, and thrips. Uh, with regards to field performance, it has compact growth and it does not tend to form offshoots or keikis. Its vase life is quite um, long with 58.3 days. With BA, it is just almost the same at 58.9 days. And these all include a three-day packing. All of our vase life studies are um, conducted by Joanne um, um, Imamura, Likti Imamura on the Big Island. Um, other space or design attributes include a new shade of orange color. The space elongates as it matures. However, it's not as glossy as Tropic Sunrise. And we do see an associated um, bleaching or loss of obake when the temperatures are high. There are also some um, deformities such as space notching. Microplants of this variety was distributed in June 2020. The second variety is Capojo Velo UH1991. It's a high yielding pink obake. Of course, it has some 
drawbacks to its production. It gets nematode strips. However, it seems to be anthracnose resistant and it's tolerant against bacteria blight. It has compact growth and does not tend to form cakey. In water, it lasts about a month, um, 34 days or 35 days with BA. Um, other space attributes include bleaching during high temperatures, the loss of obake during high temperatures, and the space can also get damaged when rains are heavy. Microplants of Kapoho Velo were distributed in June of 2020. Um, Eric Tanoe mentioned earlier wedding celebrations 2020 uh, as one of the activities of um, Hefna. And um, if you haven't watched it, I do encourage you to watch the videos because it gives us a good feedback of how our varieties are being accepted and are being used by um, these designers. So uh, one of the designers featured in Wedding Celebrations 2020 is Brenna Kwan, and she designed um, these um, wonderful um, outdoorsy um, designs with UH-1991 Kapoho Velo. Honi Honi is similar to Kapoho Velo, um, it seems to be tolerant to bacteria blight. And most importantly, it seems to be anthracnose resistant. It's high yielding. However, it's, um, it has short to medium stems. Therefore, it can have dual purpose use as potted um, plant or a cut flower. Its vase life is about a month. Um, it has a unique butterfly shape and it's glossy. So these um, um, boxes of these um, UH-2007 or Honi Honi were used for the um, teacher's workshop, the P3 workshop in September. So we uh, sent over 32 boxes or approximately 512 plantlets. Um, Microplants were also distributed to Hefna in June, 2020. Maui Bride is the fourth of our releases. Uh, it has desirable and undesirable characters, uh, such as some bacteria blight and probably some phytotoxicity. However, it's anthracnose resistant. It seems to be tolerant to bacterial blight and seems to be nematode tolerant, although in one location, susceptibility was um, reported. Um, in water, it can last about 34 days or 35 days. Um, however, there's some um, drawbacks to this um, space. It will occasionally form um, notching. So this is what we refer to as notching uh, or misshapen space lobes. Uh, the space gets longer and elongates as it matures. Occasionally, a double space will form, usually in color, cooler temperatures. The unique color and shape has been favored by designers. Microplants were distributed in June 2020. So these are some of the designs uh, made with Maui Bride. And these were featured in Wedding Celebrations 2020 in Wedding Bouquets made by Alison Higgins of Grace Flowers Hawaii. She was the Hawaii Island designer and Dottie Reynolds uh, Yadao from Kauai. When Dottie presented her video, she made a comment about Maui Bride coming in two forms. This is the example of the cup and saucer or a double um, space. She calls it the bonus form because it has two faces. Um, Maui Bride was also used in a wedding bouquet made by the Canadian designers who participated in wedding celebrations. Um, so this is Poppy Parsons who did a prairie style bouquet that also included Maui Bride and this was a bouquet made by Hitomi Gilliam. So what are our plans for 2020? We're looking at UH2555. It has a unique shape because it has hokuloa as well as tropic fire in its parentage. 
it yields about 6.5 flowers per plant per year. And it has vigorous growth. Occasionally, it will form, it has crooked stems as reported by our cooperators, and they attribute it to larger leaf sizes, particularly if the plants are not pruned periodically. Um, Joanne said that inexperienced pickers had some difficulty determining when flowers mature due to the dark color of the spadix. So sometimes these will be harvested when the neck of the, um, or the stem is still weak because if you just go solely by color change in the spadix, um, that will not be a good indication of maturity. In um, its vase life is relatively long, about a month, and um, its unique attributes are, it's, um, it's unique and new color. It's a unique and new color rather. It's rather raspberry, it's not quite purple, it's not quite pink. Um, there is a high demand for the market from the market, although we do observe bleaching or loss of colors in high temperatures, particularly in summers. It can fade with maturity, but it has a good gloss. Sometimes the lobes are uneven or asymmetrical. Here's an example of um, design made with UH2555 at Wedding Celebrations 2019. The next variety we're looking at is UH2071. It's um, medium to long. The designers really like this. It lasts 32 days, almost a month in um, uh, for vase life. It's unusual brown red color is desired by designers and it has a symmetrical space with good, glow, good gloss. Uh, the green spadex is also desired in the market. And so here are designs made with um, 2071. Um, this is UH2237. Um, it's a cross between tropic fire and tropical, high yielding, and it seems to be nematode tolerant and um, anthracnose tolerant. In the field, there might be some crooked stems up to 10%. There has been reports of spate spotting or purpling of unknown origin that seems to be alleviated by extra calcium. When the plant is young, the, soft, the spathe can be soft and thereby bruise when um, handled. These um, plants of UH2237 have long internodes, therefore more frequent replanting may be needed to keep the vigor in size. Its vase life is um, less than a month, about three weeks with 23.7 days control or 25.8 days with BA. If you notice, I have a new category here that says out of water. And this is because at the um, wedding celebrations workshop that he told me William presented, she talked about the uh, flower cloud and that included using plant material that um, is out of water. She also presented at a workshop I recently as, uh, attended a design concept called the floral canvas. And it, it included using stems of flowers or plant material without a water source. And this is important for events where you might need six to eight hours of the plant material looking good without a water source. So I did some preliminary testing and it seemed like we can get UH2237 without a water source for about a week under air conditioned, um, in an air conditioned room. Its um, design in attributes include a vibrant red color, sometimes described as fire engine red. It has good gloss. Um, the space shape is unique. It's kind of like a tulip in between a tulip and a heart. And if you notice this space is not totally flat, may not necessarily be useful for or helpful in packing. However, this is desired by the designers. Another uh, feature of this particular variety is that the high gloss of the space is seen from maturity 
in the antique form. And this is the antique, antique form, because if you notice, the spadix has changed color from white to yellow and to green. And um, this is something that might be worth looking into. If you have excess production, then you can um, save some and keep some of the flowers in the field for the antique forms. The last variety we're looking at for release in 2020 is UH2245. It has about 39 days. Um, Joanne is completing the vase life study um, and its design attributes include the brownish red color desired by designers. The space can get large to extra large as the plants mature and there is some seasonal obake expression. The green tip on the spadex is desired. So this is UH2245 used in designs. When it comes, now we go to the advanced testing um, selections. These are some of the varieties that we're still looking at in the field that show some promise. This is UH2514 across uh, that has Hokuloa, Acropolis, and Midori in the background. It can get large to extra large. This variety um, selection is UH2317. It has Tropic Lime in the background and Midori. So the backside of the space has a nice green color. Designers have said that they like this coloration and are looking forward to fast tracking this variety. This is UH2566, a green variety, I mean, a green selection that we have, I'm calling it a variety, that seems to be anthracnose resistant as compared to Midori, which easily gets anthracnose. The tulip heart kind shape is something that we've been looking at. So we have two selections that are, are um, currently field tested, this is UH2074 and UH2186. They are siblings that come from a cross between Hokoloa and Acropolis. This is UH2200, that's also in the field. Um, the designers like this because the color of the spadix does not contrast with the color of the space. So they, uh, rather than contrasting, it's a nice compliment. So um, it's something worth exploring. So this might be something that we might um, release down the road. Um, I have here longevity out of water question mark, question mark, because um, he told me Gilliam used this in her floral canvas and it seemed to last with, um, about a week. So that is something of interest. We have UH2265, uh, unusual color, although it produces crooked stems. We're still sitting on the fence on this one, although the designers really are interested in it. Um, so I mentioned earlier that we were moving along our, um, our um, production or breeding program. So we have some selections of interest and this is brought about by collaboration. So there was a lot of input that came not from within but with conversations with our growers and the designers. Um, Eric mentioned collaboration as key in his welcome remarks. So here are some selections we're trying to add increase as a result of feedback from our collaborators. On the left is UH2313. Anthracnose has become more prevalent with the increasing number of days with high temperatures and humidity. Kozahara, a classic dark red variety, is susceptible to anthracnose. So we looked at our selections, what do we have? And we identified UH2313, which has a similar color to Kozahara. This is now in clonal increase. On the right is the selection that was very recently selected based on feedback from designers. After the 2016 collaboration with growers, designers, and researchers, we have uh, developed a closer um, communication line with the designers so that they can weigh in and see what we have or we can ask them 
to see if there are varieties that might be of, in, of selections that might be of interest to them. This particular selection, it's our newest selection, UH2686. We just put it in culture based on the feedback we receive that it looks something that they'd like to work with. And we also have done numerous um, process so that we can keep on feeding the pipeline. Okay, so to recap, the average um, time to produce a new variety is about 14 years. And I have here Regina, which was released in 20, um, 2005, so 15 years ago. Um, 15 years later, we find that it's a considered, that it is considered a favorite variety and uh, with anthuriums as one of the top trending flowers. Now, um, as a researcher, it's very important to keep abreast as with the designers to find out what's trending. So at the um, online course um, held last week for floristry teachers called Celebrate, Educate and Elevate, sponsored by the Mississippi State University Extension, um, Dr. Jim Del Prince and he told me Gilliam were um, the main instructors of the course. And he told me shared that as floristry teachers, we need to be aware of such trends. I feel that researchers, readers in particular, should also be aware of the trends so that we can identify where our genetics, where our breeding program can fulfill a need. So some of the resources she shared to keep updated is a resource called Trend Summit. So with Trend Summit 2020, the group of um, industry people identified favorite tropicals that included our 15-year-old Regina, Sundance, Lavender Lady that was released in the late 80s, and Marion Seaforth that was released as early as 1963. So classics have a place in the floral um, design uh, world and just because a variety is old, as long as it performs very well, I think we should keep um, maintaining and looking at that. So the top trending flowers include Anthurium amnicola and designer um, size Anthuriums. So for Trend Summit, amnicolas and uh, some smaller Anthuriums were deemed the best. So this is what's trending right now. Now shifting gears um, in June, one of our students, um, Jacqueline Oy, defended her um, research, um, her master's research on um, speeding up uh, multiplication on thorium using a bioreactor called the RETA system. Um, so what she did in her research was to optimize um, the conditions for the RETA system uh, it wasn't solely the bioreactor, but we, she compared the bioreactor to initiate shoots um, from internodes, cuttings that were used as explants. So this is the flat, the blue bar is the flask system, the one we use conventionally using flasks in a liquid medium with uh, 0.2 uh, milligrams per liter benzyl adenine. Compared to the RETA bioreactor system, protocol for banana, which uh, was 20 minutes immersion and a two hour resting interval. And then looking at how it can be used for anthurium. In anthurium, there has been limited research. There was one paper put out by Rufino and Savona where they recommended a four minute immersion with an interval of three hours. However, with Jack's work, a five minute immersion with 20 mils per explant and a resting uh, interval of two hours resulted in a threefold increase of total shoots in 90 days. Therefore, based on the initial study she did for New Pahoa Red, that we can get about um, three and a half fold um, increase in plantlets for um, five Rita bioreactors, we can get um, about um, 350 plants within the time period. Okay. She also looked at the performance of different varieties in the RETA system. So we're looking at um, the siblings UH1067 is ARCS and UH1145 is uh, Lavender Lady. 
8697 is our accession of uh, New Pahoa Red. And we have hybrids of New Pahoa Red here, UH2271, which is in field test, and UH2409, which is not in field test yet. When we look at the imaginary line and we say, okay, let's look at an average number of shoots of about 40 would be a good cutoff amongst these 10 cultivars. We notice that um, Yupahoa Red and its hybrids have very high um, shoot production capacities within 90 days. So what this tells us that as breeders, it would be good to use Yupahoa Red to um, introduce the trait of um, being fast in culture. Um, Midori is slightly below average. Um, we know it's not a straight Andreanum variety. And um, A213-2 is one of the species that has green um, Anthurium nymphae folium, and we assume it might be in the Midori background, but that's another story for another day. Okay, um, so what are we doing now that we have the Rita set up? We know that uh, we can, we're trying to see how other varieties can perform. This is one variety that we, I mean, selection that we want to um, test um, in the field. And so to push the production cycle, we are trying to look at the Rita system also so that we can um, ease the bottleneck of not getting enough materials to field testing at a timely manner. So these, um, materials were placed in the bioreactor in August 14, a month after we have these types of shoots. And after transfer to solid medium, this is in October, we have a number of shoots that are ready to be cut and um, separated so that we can send it out, uh, grow it out and put it in advanced testing. Other variety um, selections that we're testing in the RETA are UH1712 and UH2053. We also have UH2647. So hopefully with the RITA system, we can move these selections to field test sooner than later. Okay, this is what the RITA setup looks like. This is a four channel electric control panel. This is the pump. We have a manifold for 20 units and there's silicon tubing that will um, connect the um, uh, will pump out the air from the pump. The cost is not cheap. Um, so we're looking at price comparisons. Um, when Jack presented to the um, Hefna board in July, one question arose regarding um, costing and uh, cost benefit analysis. So that's something we are looking forward to work with Russell and the ag economists at, on Hilo. So this is um, a cheaper alternative would be to combine the RITA system with some locally sourced, I mean, domestically sourced materials such as uh, aquarium pump and the timer. Jack also did a um, analysis of how much time what did she spend um, when using the RITA system in co conjunction with our semi-solid semi-solid system. So it's RITA initiation and then using the gel right for the final um, uh, grow out before sending out to um, for advanced testing. So it takes about 28 um, hours on a weekly basis to do that. Shifting gears, um, I know I was supposed to talk about the dendrobium hybridization, but let me use a few minutes to talk about our trials and tribulations. So um, we had um, damaged um, greenhouses from um, windstorms. And so we didn't get it repaired till September. And we only got to move our, um, the roof was completed in October. So we were not able to have any flower spiking, very poor flower spiking during the early part of the year. Now that the conditions have been um, much better since the completion of the greenhouse, we're able to um, make more um, seed pods because we have already seen the plant materials 
coming back to life and they're starting to make buds. So we should be ready to make seed pods maybe in November or December. With that, um, I'd like to thank um, many people. It took a village to make our program um, productive and we want to continue our collaboration um, so that we can ultimately up our game to increase our market share, as Eric mentioned in um, this morning's um, opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Tessie, for that update. Uh, your program is so extensive, and we appreciate all the work that you have put into it along with your staff.